So just looking at clinical risk factors and some laboratory markers, so elevated inflammatory markers like ESR, CRP, WBC, and low albumin mm-hmm. were associated with increased amputation risk. How should clinicians integrate these laboratory findings into uh, DFU management and mm-hmm. risk stratification in general? That's really a good question. So typically, these are markers that we check when people are admitted to the hospital. But even as an in the outpatient, if you see a patient and you're really not sure how severe this infection may be, you can check these laboratory values. And if they're high, then that would suggest that they probably need to be sent to the hospital because they probably need a higher level of care as opposed to just giving them oral antibiotics and sending them home. So interestingly enough, HbA1c was not associated with amputation risk in your cohort. What are your thoughts on glycemic control and its role in DFU outcomes? Yeah, so that's also a good question. Sometimes hemoglobin A1c can be a very inconsistent thing when we're looking at predictions of bad outcomes. And I think the, the issue is, is at the end of the day, when your sugars are well controlled, you're going to heal better. But if somebody comes in and they have good vasculature, they don't have severe nerve damage, and the podiatrist or the vascular surgeon can get away with cutting off just a small portion of the toe, because sometimes they might just cut off the tip of the toe or the toe itself. If they're able to get a nice, good, clean margin and it heals well, sometimes it happens when someone's A1C is not at goal, which is typically going to be less than 7%. There's some people that will still heal well, even with an A1C of 9 or 10, surprisingly enough. Mm. So you talked a little bit about you know, the cascading effect overall, um, you know, and how amputations can then lead to more amputations, unfortunately. Can you discuss the significance of comorbidities like peripheral artery disease, Mm -hmm. osteomyelitis, and Mm -hmm. other things like that? Yeah, so typically what we've seen in our study, as well as in other studies, is that people who have other comorbidities from diabetes typically are going to be at more risk. So that would include um, renal disease, so that's someone who's on dialysis or someone has advanced kidney disease. And it's not surprising because most people with kidney disease have poor circulation. We know that PAD or peripheral arterial disease will definitely set someone up for an increased risk of amputation. And what you can do with that is if you catch it early, patients can have what's called revascularization. That's when the surgeon would go in and either balloon to open up the artery or can actually do a bypass. And that would allow for better blood flow. So if you have to give someone antibiotics to treat an infection, it's more likely now that the antibiotics can get to the area of the wound. Um, We also know that um, patients who have retinopathy, that severe blindness, may be at increased risk because they're not able to see the wounds on their feet, and that's going to be problematic for them. And so that's why I always tell people it's important that you or your caregiver check your feet regularly. 